let's transition into putting set list together. That's a big part of what we have to do as worship pastors, is usually on a weekly basis, at least once, we have to put, put a list of songs together. And so, you know, it's more than just taking your four favorite songs and putting them together, but it's really kind of prayerfully thinking about the moment ahead of time and trying to forecast mentally and spiritually, okay, who's going to be there? What's their background? What's the demographic? What are the age groups? You know, maybe if I'm going to the nursing home, I may think, okay, I want to do hymns. Because again, all, the whole idea of serving others is a thread that is, you know, ties through everything we, we do. That's what we've been saying, right? Having an attitude of what is going to help people connect with the Lord? How can we create an environment and a moment that will make it easy for people to let their guard down and connect with the Lord? So I'm thinking ahead of time, okay, who's going to be there uh, age group wise? Now let's face it, a lot of times our Sunday mornings are from teenagers, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 somethings, you know, 70, 80 year olds. So we're, I'm thinking blended worship and that's where most of us are at, you know. It's, so it can't be all just rock and roll, it can't be all modern worship. I'm sorry, not in my opinion, not if we have a pastor's heart. I think it's important that we think about Maybe, you know, we have a hymn in there and we bring in a modern worship chorus. Maybe a chorus from, you know, the late 80s or something. It's, but, you know, more of like a smorgasbord or a, well, kind of a buffet, if you will. And I just think, again, that's, that's the attitude of serving the moment. In fact, write that down. Serve the moment. Serve the situation prayerfully as you forecast, okay, who's going to be there? And the next question I ask myself is, how much time do I have? Because I want to build this journey. I want to build a journey, but you know, does this journey have to happen in 10 minutes on a Bible study with 10 people? Or is this going to be at a nursing home? Or is this going to be at a youth rally where we're going to have cool lights and you know, mostly teenagers there and we want a lot of up-tempo stuff? Or is it a Sunday morning where maybe we have 20, 25 minutes of congregational singing? Okay, so those are two questions. Who's going to be there? what's their background, and just prayerfully thinking that through, keeping them in mind as we prayerfully think about our set list. How much time do we have? And the other thing is, I always check in with my pastor or the teacher. You know, if, it, if it's an event other than a Sunday morning, I'll make it a point to contact the teacher and say, hi, this is Paul, you know, can you give me some feedback on what you're gonna be sharing, maybe some key scriptures? And I do that on a weekly basis with my pastor. I'll just ask him ahead of time, hey, do you have any idea? <laughs> and most of the time he does, but sometimes we'll say, I don't really know. So I don't know what your situation is, but at least ask. Because yeah, it, wouldn't it be nice if the music, the special music, um, the sermon, everything kind of tied together maybe and supported so that people leave that meeting with like one core idea, one or two core ideas. So. I just think it's a good practice to go ahead and ask your pastor, do you have a, even a ballpark idea of what you're going to be preaching on and do you have any key scriptures? And that just helps me and then when I take that information, I take the time that I'm allotted and I think about who's going to be there and then I begin to prayerfully process by looking over my master song list. So let, let's, let's take a look at that right now. Putting together our set list is like the nuts and bolts of our primary role. I mean, week in and week out, this is one of our primary responsibilities, really, is to prayerfully try to, try to forecast what the service is going to be like. What kind of moment are you preparing for? And if it's a Wednesday night, it could be a Bible study on Tuesday night or whenever. It could be Sunday morning we're talking about here. But as I've said, just prayerfully forecast, if you will, with your, you know, sanctified imagination. Try to just ask the Lord to kind of, kind of get there. It's almost virtual reality, if you will. Kind of imagine, you know, just what, what that moment's going to feel like. And that's where, you know, in your own church, you can ask yourself, what's, what's going on in your church in terms of, you know, with the, with the folks there, is there like a sad thing that's gone happening, like a funeral that just, just happened that's, uh, like recently we have an el had an elder pass away. And, um, I had my set list all planned out and 
Um, you know, of course, we want to rejoice in the fact that, hey, our brother's in heaven. But I didn't want to ignore the fact that this is sad, too. In the natural, this is, there is a, we want to give people a chance to, to mourn, to grieve in a sense, but then point to the hope of the resurrection. Or maybe there's just been an amazing thing happened. Just, you're just rejoicing and it's just awesome and you feel like we have to celebrate this week. This is like a big deal. I mean, we want to celebrate every week, but there's something extra special that just is going on in our congregation where I feel like we need to kind of really respond with gratitude and songs of praise. And uh, So anyway, this is my thought process. I'm, I'm thinking, what's going on in my congregation is the Holy Spirit kind of doing some things in people's lives? Is there, is there a particular season that you're in right now where particular songs could address that situation? Songs can be powerful tools and vehicles. So in a sense, you're almost like a doctor and you're, you're taking this information in and you're asking yourself, how much time do you have available so that you can plan out this journey? That's, as we've said, important to think about whether it's 10 minutes or 30 minutes or longer. Think about how you're going to start and then how that journey is going to go. Is it going to start kind of medium and then build up to sort of a something, you know, really high tempo and then kind of begin to transition into more ballad? Um, or sometimes just to keep it fresh, maybe I'll start off with a ballad so that it always... Remember the old saying back in the day was three fast ones, three slow ones. And... Um, you know, we don't want to create a formula out of this. So that's why I'm saying every week, just shake that Etch-a-Sketch. Remember that, that old toy, the Etch-a-Sketch, and you draw the stuff on it, man. But from week to week, just go ahead and shake that. Forget about last week. You can learn from last week, but ask yourself, okay, Lord, what's happening? So how much time do we have? Who's going to be there? I, I touch base with my pastor to see if there's any particular theme on his heart. And does he have any key scriptures? Um, and that will help me in my selection process. Thank you for the way that you love us, how you love us. Thank you for the way you have made us. So let's say for, I'm just going to, for an example, um, I'm just going to say he's preaching on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and they are saved. And that's kind of his key scripture and he's going to do a series, let's say, and he's going to be addressing the names of God. So the name of the Lord and their strength in the name. So that's good. That's all I need. So I take that information and some of those key scriptures back into my my office or wherever, you know, wherever I happen to be preparing. Sometimes it's on an airplane these days in the quietness of my seat. But I'll, I'll just begin to look up those scriptures, write down maybe there's a few words, a few key words there, then that reminds me of another song. Then I look at my master set list or song list, master song list, where I have compiled all the songs that we as a church body um, that we're familiar with at this point. Some are, are kind of, we haven't done in a while, some are kind of brand new, but um, take a look at what my current master song list looks like. And you can see, again, I try to go for like a blended, you'll see old hymns, you'll see older choruses, like from the 80s and 90s, you'll see some new modern worship things in there. I want it to be like a buffet, you know, I don't want to just, just hammer modern worship. I don't want to just hammer my songs. I don't want to hammer just old hymns. I'm thinking since my congregation is from the from from kids to teenagers, 20-somethings, 30-somethings, boomers to folks that are in their 60s and 70s, I, I want to think about the the broad, the big picture and think about like a, a family meal, going back to that family meal idea again. And how can we make sure that we're, it's not about pleasing man, or trying to be a people pleaser, but it is being um, aware with a pastor's heart of the fact that we have many generations represented here and we don't want to just focus on one thing. So the blended worship idea, I think really, um, at least these days, that's what I'm shooting for. 
And um, so I'm going, I'm going for that. And uh, so I'm just prayerfully brainstorming. I look through my song list and I'm just thinking themes right now because the three areas that I'm going to um, concentrate on as I'm preparing this set list prayerfully, I'm thinking about keys. Well, first of all, themes. Themes, keys, and tempos. So I rig- initially I'm thinking, okay, well, the theme is going to be, can we do songs that, that, that point towards the name of the Lord? And uh, not every song doesn't have to say name in it. Um, but I'm just saying, so right now this is what a brainstorming. I'm just brainstorming. I'm not creating my list yet. I'm just pulling from my master song list songs that have a similar theme. So I'm, I'm going to write down a few here. Let's say I uh, look at the hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. I write that down. You'll notice that I have the key beside it. And that's important because I've gone through all these songs ahead of time before I put them on my song list, and I find out what the highest note in the song is. So I want to make sure the highest note in the song isn't much higher than a D or maybe an E. Mm, because I find that, ah, fine, again, we're, we're serving the congregation. It's, you may have a five octave range, but it's not about you or me. It's about making sure that 90% of the folks in our church who aren't musicians, that they can actually sing along. That's the goal, is to get them to sing. It's not to get them to just watch us and observe. So just keep that in mind. Remember, as we pick our songs, make sure they're singable. And um, so again, I'm thinking, is there a hymn? Is there an older chorus right now? I'm just going to come up with maybe 15 songs. So I'm just going to all hail the power. You'll see it's D, E, and F. So it can work in each of those keys and still be in what I would consider the congregational range. Um, And you just do that for each song. Find the highest note in the song and make sure it's not much higher than a D or an E or you're going to start losing people. So you might have to take some familiar choruses that on the record are really high and go ahead and pitch them down. Like when Lincoln Brewster did um, uh, Today is the Day, you know, he did it in the key of D, which is sounds great, has a ton of energy and it was on the radio and it just kind of had that, you know, today is the day you have made, which sounded great. But I found when I did it on a Sunday morning, I felt like I was losing people. They were just they couldn't quite stay up there. So I bumped it down a whole step to C, but then made the verses a little low. So I have the, uh, my uh, sopranos kind of cover me there, you know. I'm casting my cares aside. Anyway, um, so by the time we hit that chorus, it's right in the, the meat of uh, the tenor's range. So at any rate, another song, let's see, Jesus, name above all names. I've got here, so I'll write that down. And this is, this is the process. I just take maybe a, take a legal pad or my journal, and I just start writing these things down, okay? I'm just brainstorming. Jesus' name above all names. Uh, let's see. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Well, your name. I'll put that down. Your name. Uh, I put, our God saves uh, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. Um, you know, take a theme. You could try this. You could stop this right now and just kind of take, take the theme of God's mercy. or Take uh, the grace of God or take uh, majesty, the majesty or the glory of God and go ahead and look through your song list for songs that thematically kind of touch on that. So in this case, again, I'm sticking with songs that address your name. So now I have this brainstorm list. I've got about 15 songs there. They're not in any particular order yet, but thematically they're in the ballpark. Okay. And now I'm just going to prayerfully look at them and I'm going to consider the next thing, which is keys and tempos. Because I find that when when you're trying to create a journey, a musical journey, I find that keys going from one song to the next really affects it really affects uh, how this journey feels. You know, it, it affects the momentum, if you will. Not, not that we ever, not that we can never just stop, but I, I like, I love it when it feels like you get through five or six songs and you get to the end of that 30 minutes and it just feels like one long song. 
Just imagine that. And so I'm imagining not only the keys, but I'm also going to think about the tempo. I'm trying to imagine sort of almost like an arc, if you will. Um, first song here, you know, maybe sometimes, personally, I don't like to start the set off with something that's super, super high energy just yet because I find that a lot of folks, they're a little distracted in that first song. And I just like to give them something that will give them a chance to catch their breath, you know, and just kind of like deal with their heart, deal with issues, deal with stuff that they brought into the service with them, you know, in their heart, in their minds. So, um, however, once in a while, I'll go ahead and break that and just start off one, two, you know, and just boom, da -na 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 and just start off real up-tempo. Sometimes, it, sometimes it'll be right, I'll, I'll plan this, and it'll be right as I step up to the microphone and I can just get a feel for what's going on in the congregation. Sometimes I'll turn around and just on the spot call an audible. You know, to use a football terminology, you know, you're just, you're at the line of scrimmage and you just, you just realize, you know what, man, I really thought that first song was going to be perfect, but I think we need to, people seem really up, it just seems like there's something going on, Let, let's go ahead and, uh, let's do blah, blah, blah instead, you know, so, one, two, three, blah, nah, 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 nah. you know, again, that's where that combination of preparing and yet being open and flexible to what the Spirit might be saying. Um, so, but in this case, we're going to do our best as I'm walking through. This is how I think about putting a set list together. Um, I'm thinking about starting off with something sort of medium and then kind of, you know, so people have a chance to get their heart right and then building that next song, going into something that's up-tempo, maybe another up-tempo thing. And then, then we want to transition into, I'm thinking maybe something more medium and then maybe a couple sort of ballads. Again, don't make a formula out of this, but you have to start somewhere. So that's, in this particular case, that's what I'm doing. So I look at my brainstorm list and I'm thinking, okay, I'll hail the power. Let's see. Um, let's see. Maybe, maybe our God saves. Maybe I'll start. Uh, I could start off with our God saves in D because, I'm, again, I'm thinking about keys and tempos. And that's not super up-tempo. Like, it's kind of a medium... And I can just kind of prayerfully imagine, you know, as we're doing the intro, saying, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's all find our seats so we can stand up together. And let's stand up and sing. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. So again, I'm sort of, I'll, I'll play that here and by myself, and I'm just imagining what that might feel like. And then, okay, I imagine that song ending. Our God saves. Okay, and you may already know this, but to me, the best, uh, the best um, flow, if you will, is to start the next song in the same key that you just ended the previous song with. So... You may already know that, but you can't do every song in the same key, so eventually we have to change. But it's nice when you, you end that song in one key and the next song maybe starts in the same key or maybe up a half step or a whole step. Just, I'm always thinking a little bit this way, like going up. I rarely will go down. So anyway, I'm trying to imagine, okay, so I'm going to end in D. Is there any song on the brainstorm list that begins in the key of D? that maybe has a brighter tempo. So I look down my list, and I'm thinking, well, let's see. Um, let's see. What about Jesus? Uh, what about All Hail the Power? What about a hymn? That starts in D. So, uh, so I try that by myself, not with my band yet, but I try to imagine, I got And I think about, I don't know how your church responds. If sometimes they clap, they may clap or they may not. But, you know, you have to kind of imagine and prepare for that moment. So if they don't clap occasionally, like we've talked about, you might gently encourage them occasionally. Hey, the word says clap your hands. You know, let's applaud the Lord. I like using that expression sometimes. I'll say, hey, guys, we don't do that often here, but why don't we like applaud the Lord? Just like we would applaud a very special person if they came in here, you know, because we believe God is here. So can we, 
Can we just do that? Can we just applaud the Lord? The Bible says, clap your hands. And Anyway, first time, first few times we did that long ago. You know, it's a little bit like, oh, that's a little different. But, but let's, let's assume they, they, they respond a little bit, that some folks at least clap. So I'll, I'll imagine looking back at my drummer and having him start the kick drum for the next song. So I'm imagining, I got saved. And instead of going, you know, and choking it, I might just go, and out of that, I look at him and it's like, God, you save. And we honor your name. Let's sing the old hymn. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Anyway, so I'm imagining that. Then I, after you do a verse of that, then I could see going up. Oh, hell. I'm imagining a modulation there. So because the song, it says here, that it can work in the key of E as well. So make sure, of course, you always cue your band when you're going to crown, so crown him Lord of all. One, two, second verse. Chosen seed of Israel's race, he ransomed from the fall. And then, and then eventually, maybe, well, we get to the end of the song, crown him Lord of all. Last time, mm, crown him Lord of all. One, two, three, four. Mm. Lord, we crown you Lord. We crown you, we bless you, we honor you this morning. We crown you Lord of all. All right, so again, I'm doing this by myself. I'm just trying to imagine what Sunday morning might feel like. So I like those first two songs. I like that feels right in my head. Um, so now I look at my brainstorm list and say, is there a song that begins in the key of E that we could go to that might address the name of the Lord? Um, and I don't see one off the top of my bat off the top of my head here I don't see uh, but there could be let's see crown him Lord of all then you there could be a song like mm, something has a bright tempo there but in this case I'm not seeing anything in E also another thing would be to go up a half step I would look for something on that list is there something in the key of F because I think it just sounds good to kind of go Feel that lift? We were in E. Mm, then all of a sudden it goes up. Mm, oh God, you are my God. Mm, so maybe, you know, that might be one option among many. Or I, mm, with all of my heart, I will give you all my worship. I will give you. So a lot of things you could do to go from E to F. But, okay, another, another thing is E, just a little bit of music theory. A uh, little, little plug for music theory made easy. Music theory, knowing some music theory will make your musical life a little easier. So check out music theory made easy. Because um, I want to use this language. There's a one chord, there's a five chord. Okay, so I was just in the key of E. And that's the one chord in the key of E, but in the E is a five chord in the key of A. And as you find out in music theory, five always wants to resolve to the one. So if you end, so if you end a song in E, it's the five chord of the key of A. So A just feels like a good lift there. So hmm. I, again, sometimes my band guys laugh at me. They, they think. Whatever, but in my head it feels right. I'm thinking about, don't, it's not a formula, don't be trapped to this, but it's something to consider. So either go same key, up a half step or up a whole step, or take that key and it's the five chord of the new key. 
Hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm looking at my list and going, is there a song in the key of A that would work? And, um, well, Blessed Be Your Name would be nice because that's still sort of an up-tempo. So I'm imagining uh, that and I'm just going to feel that for a minute. Let's see, we're in E. Crown him. Oh, yes, Lord, we crown you. And, and maybe uh, if, if I'm the worship leader, leader that, that morning, I may have the keyboardist get me to the new key as I'm maybe just kind of prayerfully bringing that song to a close. God, thank you, God. We do. We, we bless your name. We, we crown you, Lord of all. And then all of a sudden, I'll hear the keyboard player. I hear that A. He's just sort of a little bit of a pad gets me in the new key there. And that creates a, gives me a chance to put a capo on. You just kind of, mm, now I'm like, blessed be your name. In the or I may stop and think, okay, coming out of that, Lord, we crown you, we bless your name, we glorify your name. All hail the power of Jesus. Jesus, your name. Jesus, your name is holy. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, Lord. We run to your name. And, uh, so maybe I'm thinking instead of going right into the song, I may start off. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And I'll think, you know what, actually, for where this song is in the set, I don't want to bring it down yet. If it was later in the set, maybe I'd bring it down. So I'm thinking, no, I don't want to do that. I think I might just start the tune like, so we don't lose mo too much momentum. Okay, you know what I mean by momentum, right? You just that first song move right into that next song not much of a lull there move into the next one if you can keep the thing moving along that way i just picture like a train track or i picture like uh, water still water and we're just keeping the water stirred not nervously not like oh my gosh can't have any silence but just kind of keeping it moving not not letting the energy come down those transitions i want it to feel almost prayerful so it's like god we as that last song was ending god we you know, bless, um, all hail, hail the power of your name, Lord. You know, um, we glorify your name. Lord, your name is a strong tower, you know, and um, we honor your name this morning. And I know where I'm headed, because then all of a sudden I can go, we honor your name, Lord, we bless your name. We, not in a cutesy kind of way, but just, you know, you're trying to just get that transition in your heart before Sunday comes. Does that make sense? So don't overthink it, but you're just like, yeah, I can imagine just saying, God, we honor your name. We lift up your name. We glorify your name. We bless your name, Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. We have streams. And there we are into that song. That just feels right. Eventually it's going to be, you know, pretty... real driving so there's our third song so I, that feels good it's like ups medium up song up song blessed be your glorious name oh blessed be your name so I'm, I'm working this out by myself here trying to imagine getting to that moment ending on that chord and we could go but then that just feels like ah. Uh, so, but I could, I could imagine, though, just keeping something going there. Glorious name. And the drummer, you know, an electric guitar player. And just keeping something going there. And, and maybe we just refrain that one part. God, we bless your name. And, and every blessing that you've poured out this week, God, we turn back around and give you praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be your name. Maybe I won't go back into the chorus, but it's more of half talking, half praying, half singing, you know. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hmm. Blessed be your name, Lord. Your name is a strong and mighty tower, Lord. And then maybe the keyboard player, as I'm just prayerfully bringing that song, he goes up a half step. I look at my list here and go, you know what? Maybe your name would be good there, going from the key of A up to B flat. Again, it's a nice lift, so here we were in A. And then as, as um, 
as I'm prayerfully, I look, I may look at the keyboard player and all of a sudden he's the first one to come in with. I don't know. I just like that. I like that lift, personally, as opposed to imagine if you were an A and all of a sudden you go down. I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't work as well for me. It's just, uh, so we're going to go up a half step to um, God bless it be your name. And instead of always doing starting off, starting the song off, I, I kind of try to imagine myself, is there a way to kind of link those songs together where it feels more like one long song instead of feeling like every time I do your name, we have to do the eight bar intro. No, don't have to do that. So I'm just imagining coming out of blessed be your name, God, even the darkness, still we say, God, we choose to say blessed be your name. And maybe I'll start with the second verse. And before we, oh Jesus, in your name we pray, would you come and fill our hearts today? Maybe the band's not in yet. I'm just imagining starting off like this. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Maybe the band comes in. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. But the point to this, though, you see, again, I'm trying to, there's no formula. I'm just you know, prayerfully going through the list and imagining even the transitions. And, you know, come Sunday, I may get to that moment, and it may feel completely different. And, um, you know, this is where we learn. We learn by doing it, and then we we can look back and go, that felt right, you know, that felt right, or hmm, that felt funny, that was kind of a train wreck, you know. Note to self, don't try to go from, you know, E flat to F sharp, key wise. So, again, here's the process, so your name, and then we end the, your name, and now I'm thinking that's almost like a little bit medium, by the end, it's almost ballad -y, medium ballad, because by the end it sort of builds. Uh, Nothing is a power to save. But your name, it's, it's kind of building there. Oh, Jesus, your name. Here's the ending. Look back at my drummer. Jesus, your name. Again, I just think stay in there. Have your band just, I think, stay in there, especially when you get towards the back half of the set. Don't, don't just always choke that too soon. Just that sends like this message to the congregation that we're, we're you know, we're not choking this moment. We're, we're just kind of, we're going to bask in it. We're going to linger. We're gonna, so yes, Lord. Ah, oh, Lord. And then maybe I'll just want to just tag that last thing. God, give us strength to live for you, God. Maybe there's a line from that previous song or the one you're headed to that that becomes kind of a prayer for that transition. Yes, Lord, we do, we pray. God, give us strength. We cry out for strength to live for you, God, that our lives would glorify your name. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we call upon your name. We call upon your name. Jesus, name above all names. Beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. That's a little bit low for me, so we could we could start in B flat, and I notice it goes up to C. So maybe I'll have one of my female singers go ahead and lead that out. So I'm again, even in the planning process, I'm imagining, oh, that'd be perfect for like one of my alto singers. It's just be the right in her range, you know. Jesus. Name above all names. You know what I mean? And then, Manuel God, this a redeemer living world. And then how do we get to that new key? Um, she set up the five chord of the new key. Now there's a lot of ways you can go to a new key. You can just go right to it. Jesus, but that particular time, I think it would help with the setup chord, so we're going. Blessed Redeemer, living world. Now we all, the guys and everybody comes in. 
Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. So I'm just imagining that, and that just feels right, you know, coming out of your name. Our blessed Redeemer, living word. And uh, that's in C, so I, I, I kind of think, okay, when we're done that song, we'll be in C. Now, there's sometimes I'll plan six, seven songs on a Sunday, and all of a sudden I get to that moment, and I look at the, that digital clock that's down there, you know, that digital clock in the sky, you know, the back of the church or somewhere. And you got to have those because you're kind of lost in the spirit, but you have to make sure, you know, it's that, that fine line of just respecting the time limit that you have, trying to... But I don't, you know, fortunately, our, our leadership in our church, they give some grace there. So if it just feels like, man, we should just hang here a bit. Not too long. I'm not trying to get an extra 15 minutes, but um, we're not that uptight if we go over a minute or two or three, you know. And maybe there's a few times where I'll actually end a few minutes early, you know. I'll just get to that moment and just feel like, wow, Lord, we just, blessed Redeemer, God, redeem our lives this morning. And I'll just feel in my heart like, I think we're done. Beautiful Savior, beautiful. Or maybe like I planned on doing a song and all of a sudden I get to this moment and because I've, I've worked with these songs a lot and they're sort of memorized, I think, oh, key of C, we're just saying, Sunday morning, I hadn't planned on doing this. I wouldn't say this, but in my head I'm getting there. Oh, beautiful Savior, beautiful Savior. And I just find myself dwelling on that beautiful Savior. And it makes me think of, Beautiful one I love, beautiful one I adore, beautiful one my soul must sing. And you know, maybe we don't even do the song. I just kind of camp on that little chorus. Oh, beautiful one. We just do it real, just kind of out of time like that. And the band just kind of comes in playing real real lightly, you know, there's no time. Beautiful one, and that just feels right. Or maybe in that moment I'll decide in this preparing mode, like, you know what, that'd be a great song. It does, it does kind of come back up. But maybe because we've sort of done this arc, we did two ballads, and now we could kind of end a little bit like, you've opened my eyes to your wonders and Capture my heart with this love. So sometimes you want to end maybe a little bit up. A lot of times I hear worship pastors say that their senior pastor, before he comes or he or she comes with the message, wants something that's a little more up tempo. So, anyhow, um, this is what it looks like for me. You know, this, uh, don't make it a formula. All this stuff can be overridden or changed, but I think just to recap, just to uh, prayerfully consider the moment, consider what's going on in your congregation, consider what the speaker or the pastor's message is, kind of begin brainstorming um, on that theme over your song list, look through your, so your master song list, pull some th songs that have that similar theme, then start zeroing in on keys and tempos and kind of, okay, and, and think about a journey. Think about creating the sense of flow and the sense of journey uh, where it doesn't feel like just a bunch of songs thrown out there, but it just it feels like you kind of gently lead people to this place, hopefully lead by example. You're not forcing them. You're not making them. You're not a worship pusher. You know, you're not pushing them into the Holy of Holies, um, which, by the way, it's another progression as we close this section, is that I, I like to think about the progression in, uh, in uh, Psalm 100. You know, it talks about the outer court, the inner court, and then the Holy of Holies. We come into His presence with thanksgiving, come into His courts with praise. So in the beginning of the set, it's like outer court songs, I think about. Like outer court, happy songs, clappy songs. In the Old Testament, everybody was allowed in the, in the outer court. And then the inner court was a little bit more exclusive. Um, at the time, right? I think it was men only and, you know, that was just different seasons in, in God's, 
in, in God's timetable. So but there was the outer court and then the inner court. So I think about songs that begin addressing the Lord, but maybe you're still kind of in that medium to up-tempo. You know, but if I'm going to sing about the Lord and it's kind of this up-tempo, praise, happy thing, I kind of put that more towards the front where it's more of a gathering type song. And then inner court songs. And then I think about Holy of Holies where it was just, man, those songs where you're just like, ah, oh, man, you just like, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. And, and so you, those intimate songs. So just, just that's another thing in the back of your mind. You kind of consider that progression, going from the outer court to the inner court to the Holy of Holies. And again, don't, don't, um, none of this is a formula, but just consider this as you prayerfully put together your song list from week to week.